Networking and marketing made simple is for you, the business owner who has a product, a service, or a message that you believe in. My name is Scott Aaron, and each week we'll take a behind the scenes look into the real world marketing and networking tactics and strategies for getting what you have in front of you to a lot more people. Thanks for spending time with me. And now let's get started. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Networking and Marketing Made Simple. Super excited for today's episode because we are going to be talking about winning, not just at life, but winning in everything. And uh, Carolyn Willman is, I would say, the go-to person uh, to learn how to win uh, in whatever facet and whatever aspect you're looking to. Uh, digital marketer has multifaceted businesses. Uh, a ton of resources out there, books, audiobooks, podcast, uh, live trainings, and so much more. And I don't want to spill all the beans. I obviously want her to do that um, because we have a lot to talk about today. So Carolyn, welcome to today's episode. Oh, I'm so excited. I love, this is my favorite thing to do is to help others win in all areas of their life. Yeah, it's it's a win-win when we are helping other people win. I know that we're using the word win a lot, but that's not not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. And and again, even losses are lessons to learn how to win. So there's always, um, you know, obviously a light at the end of the tunnel. So before we we dive into all the incredible things that you're doing with, um, you know, the three businesses that you now have. Let's let's rewind the tape before we kind of move forward and talk about with where you are right now. And if you could press stop as that tape is rewinding and you can stop at a particular moment in time that you remember being that that catalytic moment that kind of thrusted you onto this path of not just self-discovery, but you know, entrepreneurship and expansion and you know, wanting to do everything that you're doing now. What was that moment for you? Well, it it has two parts. The first is I had I graduated with business marketing major and I worked in the marketing department of various IT companies because IT was huge in the 90s. And I got caught in the dot com bubble and I was unemployed for a long period of time. And then um while I was uh, unemployed, I discovered the hobby of contesting. Now contests and sweepstakes are a form of marketing. So I understood it from both sides of the table and I got really good at it. And I started entering as a hobby. Meanwhile, I got pregnant and I became a stay-at-home mom since I wasn't working anyway. And then when my daughter was two, I thought it's time for me to start to go back to work. What do I wanna do? And I had won a trip to go to uh, the chef. His name was Bob Bloomer. Now, this is really interesting how it lives intersect. So I went, went a trip, we go to his house and he, out of the blue, uh, during uh, he's cooking dinner for us, we're having wine. It's an amazing evening. That was the prize, go to LA and hang out with him. He said, in like standing in front of his kitchen's big butcher block. He said, this is the center of my universe. And I thought, wow, that's really profound to tell people. So I came home and I said this to a girlfriend. She said, what's the center of your universe? And I thought contesting. I'm like, where did that come from? And how, what am I going to do with that? Well, everyone kept asking me, how are you winning so much? And I said, well, I have a system because I had taken my marketing background and combined it with my hobby. And I was thinking, you know, do I, Everyone said, you should write a book and teach other people. I thought, hmm, I don't know if that's a good idea. So I was going to a girlfriend's house. This is where I would stop the tape. I was going to a girlfriend's house to discuss this. And I passed a church. And on the service announcement board, it said, you can't lose helping others win. And I thought, I knew right then I was going to write the book. And I thought it's so funny because people say, oh, please, God, give me a sign. I had a literal sign. <laughs> And nobody had, cell phones didn't have the cameras like they have now. I didn't go back and take a, I wish I'd gone back with my camera and taken a picture, but it's burned into my mind's eye. And that's how I've kind of lived the rest of my businesses is you can't lose helping others win. 
And all, I'm a big believer in all boats rise with the tide because people th say, well, why are you giving this stuff away? Or why are you doing that? Well, we all get better by doing this. We all get better by sharing. I don't get diminished because I've shared something with you. It only enhances me and makes me a better myself. And now you're better too. It's like lighting, you know, I think you know the analogy of lighting a candle. If I light your candle with my candle, my candle doesn't go out. It still burns. And now you have light. So I that's how I approach all of this craziness that I'm doing. Because now I have three businesses <laughs> that started as one and kept growing. And I mean, again, that that just shows that, well, number one, you are helping a lot of people win. Uh, but I, I believe in, you know, the best businesses are created off of the backs of providing something that helps other people win as well. And yes. something that my wife and I always talk about with the company that we run, all the programs and offerings that we have are and are continued to be created to help other people succeed. It's not about our success. Our success is predicated on the success that other people have. And right. there's nothing that feels better when you hear a success story or a win that someone is having learning from something that you have taught them. I mean, it's, it's one of the most gratifying oh. things to have as a business owner. And, you know, when we first connected, I, I loved the whole um, contest sweepstakes notion because it's really interesting because Nancy and I, we run anywhere between seven to nine workshops a year, um, some free, some paid, that all lead into various offerings that we have. And we actually have a contest every single night. And we have prizes that we give out every single night for people that, you know, either, you know, share a screenshot of the training that they're on on social media and tag us or they do the accountability assignment and we give away whether it's gift cards or access to training programs but it's it's in, it's incentives it's it makes people want to not just complete the assignment um to participate and it increases participation and people love prizes they love giveaways i mean think about any <laughs> carnival you've ever gone to right you know it's so fun getting those raffle tickets and throwing them in those various prizes to hope that your you know your number gets called and you win that prize so uh, some people are leveraging this aspect of of contests and and giveaways and all those things and Nancy and I completely believe in it because it's it's a way to create community it's it's a way to make it fun why do you feel some of or maybe the other side of of the coin there are people that still haven't whether they haven't learned about the idea of of giveaways or contests within something that they have, um, you know, what what is something they're missing? How how come a lot of people aren't grasping this concept of doing these giveaways and contests for things that they have for their business? Um, well, I think they feel that it might be hard. So I started. I have Contest Queen, and that business teaches people how to win. Uh, but companies were getting me mixed up with some of the aggregates and the services that list giveaways. And so I started Idea Majesty as a sweepstakes marketing company to help businesses run those giveaways. And it's really easy and inexpensive for a very small business. Like you are, it's just you and your wife and you're just doing a small giveaway within your, your workshop. And it's not hard to do especially since social media came on, you know, 15, 20 years ago, a small business like ours trying to run a giveaway, it was very expensive because it was completely different then. But social media has changed the game and any small business can run a giveaway and you can use services like random.org or WooBox or Rafflecopter or gleam or any of these other programs some have free levels that you can even try and then there's paid if you're going to be doing them frequently and they're not expensive and they make it really easy for you to run you know an instagram giveaway but i've even done them in such a way where i was cleaning out my office once because 
um, uh, you know, I was renovating and I had all this lucky product left over from sweepstakes conventions I've been to. And I thought, I have no use for any of this. And I literally made five different piles on my carpet, took pictures of it, stuck it on Instagram one a day and said, leave a comment to win this prize pack. And then like three days later, I was doing a draw and I was mailing off these packs. That was the cost. I didn't pay for the stuff. It didn't cost me anything to put it on Instagram. It was basically an envelope and postage was the expense for running a giveaway. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money uh, for prizes if companies feel inhibited, especially if it's tied to your brand. You know, like it doesn't make sense for a florist to be giving away an iPad, but maybe flowers for a year would be more appropriate. You know, it's it, and how much is that going to cost them? Not a lot, just the promotions. And then it gives them something to put out there. Then they could be featuring the lucky winner because we're all always looking for more content. <laughs> and uh, and that's actually something a lot of companies are missing out is what I call back end marketing. They're not following up by showing the winners or announcing the winners and say, hey, keep following us because we have a giveaway every month or something like that. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, they always talk about the fortune being in the follow up. And, you know, there, there's the, the front facing aspect of things where you connect with someone, you make an off, whatever it is. But staying in touch, nurturing, uh, whether it's a lead that's come into your business or a contest winner. It's so important, not only to follow up with those individuals, but I'm a big believer in social proof in the sense of, you know, showcases, showcasing certain aspect of your business. So highlighting the winners of a contest, um, you know, really showing um, the aspect of how your business works and in your case, you know, helping people with contests and giveaways, showing the success stories that other companies have utilized by following your system, how it's helped them grow their email list, how it's helped them grow their customer base, and ultimately how it's helped them grow their revenue. Because again, we're always looking for new, fun, and inventive ways of impacting people in a positive way. So you hear people that uh, they do quizzes, right? So, you know, they have oh, yeah. quizzes. Yeah, they have quizzes on their websites where it gets people to know each other. You know, we, Nancy and I have a, a business assessment. That oh, people yeah. can, so people can go to our website and they can take a free business assessment. So what Nancy and I really love to focus on is helping people um, really figure out the bottleneck or the holes and gaps that they may be missing in their business and how it can be you know, provided a solution with something that we have to offer. But giving people that free business assessment helps them turn the mirror around where you're giving them something free that's very valuable because again, when someone learns a little bit more about their business and what they may be struggling with, now they have a problem that they are clearly aware of and now they just need to search and seek that solution for it. So let's use one of your three businesses as an example. Um, you know, let's talk about the, the contests and the giveaways. So for Let's say, a, you know, I'm just going to give you an example, a small business like the ones that you and I run. So let's talk about maybe someone um, is in the in the coaching and consulting uh, space. Uh, they have courses, maybe they have a membership, uh, programs, group coaching. How can someone leverage the aspect of contests and giveaways to grow some of the offerings that they have? Well, I would say tie it. The first thing they should do is always tie the prize into what they're doing. Um, like I gave the example of the florist. If you're doing coaching, you might give away one session. Like I do that every month. I give away a free one-on-one -on -one with me. So I teach um, group classes, but every month I give away a one-on-one -on -one as, as a prize. So the only cost to me is my time for an hour to teach somebody one-on-one -on -one. and people are so excited it's a great prize and so if you're a coach someone might appreciate one hour and you don't even have to do it every month you do it every six months it depends on what your business model is 
and it's very inexpensive. And then you can just do post it on all your, you know, I post everything on all my socials. I send it out to my email list. I put it on Instagram and Facebook and X, Twitter, X, <laughs> and uh, t- a TikTok. I love TikTok. TikTok's a lot of fun. And then don't forget the other areas. I put it on YouTube posts. I always remind people about all the things that are written, like my blogs and my classes and my calendars. And I put that as a post on YouTube. It's and you can you can use it in multiple forms. So you could do a reel and a post on Instagram and then share it to your stories. It doesn't cost a lot. It's just a little bit of time. And they could use it to enhance uh, visibility for their business. And they could even make it fun. They don't have to just say, hey, I'm here to do a giveaway. They could maybe give an example of the coaching uh, of what people could learn or do those. Oh, my gosh, they're so fun. Those videos where you play two different people and it's just you. They could do that. They could give an example and then draw people into their giveaway. And then once people are into their giveaway, then they have you know, a mailing list. Part of the giveaway could be, hey, you get a few extra entries if you sign up for our newsletter. I just love the aspect that people can utilize contests and giveaways for to, to get people into a program, right? To sell right. an offering. But also you can reward those people for the ones that are in your program. So um, an example, you know, Nancy and I have right. a high level, a high level mastermind. So and we we follow the teachings of uh, the twelve week year. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's it's kind of like chunking down your goals into ninety days, and yeah. it's a common practice that people have for business. But an example could be, you know, for everyone that is you know working on their ninety day goals, um, you know, the person who completes uh, their ninety day goals in the shortest amount of time can win a bonus session with uh-huh. myself and Nancy. So it's but but they act as motivators. But here's the thing. The interesting thing about that. Yes, there's going to be a winner, right? There's going to be a winner. There's going to be someone that completes it in 30 days, but it's allowed those other people to go for it, which is going to allow them to like really try to win that contest. But they're also going to win in the end because they're starting to check those boxes of the things they need to do to move the needle of their business forward, which means they're going to have some external wins as well. So I love that. Oh, yeah. So the other thing that 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 I I was very interested in learning from you is I love business evolution. You start with one business, something else comes up, you lean into that, you start that. Some so you know, you have three businesses now. So let's start with the the inception of your first business, how that came about, but also what enabled you or what happened that uh you know, sometimes it's natural progression, how things go in business, but you know, what, what happened that allowed you to then start the two other businesses where you now have three successful businesses running? Well, it's interesting because I started contest queen as, you know, I call it a hub of all things, uh, contesting. And so I was helping Uh, businesses even then as the contest queen but it was getting really muddled I discovered that you know as a marketer the message was getting muddled between teaching people how to win and helping businesses win you know running giveaways and so I and I even had a colleague say hey you really need to split these two aspects of what you're doing it because then it'll have a delineation and be more clear and I kept putting it off and putting it off and then and Let's see. So I started Contest Queen in 2005. And almost 10 years later, I thought, okay, I really need to, to, to listen. And then I finally split it off and I created Idea Majesty. But I remember distinctly when I was purchasing the business license, I had this intuitive knowing that there was a third business. And I thought, oh no. <laughs> and I put it off. And then when I purchased, um, and in 2008, actually, it'll go back to 2008, Helene Hadsel asked me to republish her books because no one else was going to do it. And I said, okay. And then I did nothing with it. And my life, you know, did a little bit of a roller coaster. I got a divorce. We went bankrupt. I nearly lost my businesses. So, you know, it was amazing that I got through that. And finally, in 2019, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, her only living, uh, you know, descendant well, 
her son, the, she has grandchildren, great grandchildren, but her son Dyke was the only one left. And I thought if I don't contact him and buy the rights to all of her work, this is going to die. And I bought the rights to her work, but she had more than one book and one was contest related. The other three were not. And I stuck up on my marketing site and I had a colleague, he goes, you know, those don't belong there. I go, I know. <laughs> and I kept putting it off. And then this year I bought the rights to 10 more books by coincidentally her second publisher, Tag Powell and his wife. And I thought, okay, I can't put this off anymore. So I started my third business. So one teaches people how to win. One teaches companies how to win. And the last one is called Words for Winning. And it's all books about positivity, mindset, um, you know, all that kind of good stuff, you know, manifesting, you name it. Well, I, you know, everything is intertwined and interconnected and, and succinct. Um, what would you say, you know, of, of the three businesses that you now have that are, you know, obviously piggybacking off of each other, it's all about helping people right. win. What do you see right now? Obviously, you've been in digital marketing for quite some time now. So you've seen all the changes, pre-social media, social media, everything else that's going on. What are the the biggest reasons why you feel people aren't fully taking advantage of a lot of the the minute aspects of what we can do to really differentiate our businesses, whether it's, you know, having quizzes, whether it's having assessments, contest giveaways. Why do you feel a lot of people uh, still aren't open to those types of ideas to, to make things more interesting for their networks and for their potential clients? Um, I'll take it back to, you know, marketing 101. They don't have a plan. So I've even got a blog post on this. And companies, what they need to do is at the beginning of the year and actually even start thinking about it, you know, in, you know, this month, next month, get ready for January. What do you want 2024 to look like? And map out what, what are you doing? When are your course? So, so, for example, for you, when... Let's map out 2024. When are your courses? What classes are you teaching? Which ones are free? Which ones are paid? When do they start? When do they finish? What are you giving away during those promotions? Line it all up and then say, oh, we're doing a freebie one in February. We can start a giveaway in January to drive um, not only traffic to people that know about it, um, but get a winner in there to have them. So you want to plan that promotion for February or for January. But what I see all the time is December is I call it sweepstakes season because every company that you can possibly think of has giveaways online and on social media, just every, like it's giveaways, sweepers that normally enter an hour to two a day could enter for eight hours. Like there's so many giveaways in December. It is crazy. And a lot of companies, some of them, they don't even look like they're planning. They just think, oh, everyone's doing giveaways now. We should just hold one. And it's not connected to any part of their business model. It's not connected to any part of a plan. It's not scheduled in like every other aspect. And so some companies, the, the big hurdle is they don't even have a plan, one, and then, then if you do have a plan, then you need to schedule sweepstakes in as part of the plan because it is just one marketing tool it's like having a tool belt with only hammers <laughs> you want a little bit of everything there you want a screwdriver and a hammer and a saw and some nails and some screws and you know you know all the all the good stuff tape measure so you can't you you need to have a whole variety and that's what's going to make a business successful but you need to have the tool belt first to put things in it <laughs> I, I could not agree more. Um, before we start to wind down with my my couple of final questions, a question for you personally, what, what is a lesson or something that you've learned about yourself and what you do from everything that you're doing now that you never expected or never thought would bubble to the surface that did going through the journey that you've been currently going on? Um. You know, my dad, uh, I'll tell you, I actually even won a contest for this this past 
um, June <laughs> in a what's the best advice your father ever gave you contest. I won him a watch, by the way, for Father's Day. And I did give it to him. Believe it or not, some people keep the prizes. But uh, anyway, I digress. His best advice to me was, you can do anything you set your mind to. And when I published my first book, I'll tell you, I love motivational books. And I read Mark Victor Hansen's The One Minute Millionaire, where you can write a book in 30 days and make a million dollars. Well, that first book took me 20 months and I never made a million dollars from it. I'm still waiting. But uh, but when I handed my first printed copy to my dad, I wrote in it, you're right, I can't do anything I set my mind to because it took me a lot longer. It was way harder than anything I ever thought. And then I kept doing it and it gets easier. I was terrified. I just published my first Audible book. I was really nervous and scared to go into the booth. I'm like, I don't even know if I can do this. But I thought, well, I don't know unless I try. It's like, you can't win. There's a reason my first book is called You Can't Win If You Don't Enter. I won't know unless I go and try. If I flop, I can always hire a narrator. You know, wh whatever. I'm. What's going to happen? What's the worst that's going to happen is it, I sound terrible and I hire somebody else. And where I'm going to get the money for that, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Everything's figure outable. Oh, I heard Marie that Forleo. quote somewhere. I wish Marie I could. It's Marie Forleo. Oh, everything's figure outable. Yeah, she wrote a book called "Everything Is Figure Outable." Yeah, I I knew I'd heard it, and I'm like, I couldn't place the. Um, that's the problem with re reading so many motivational, inspirational books. After Everything a while, starts some to of the blend quotes together. They muddle together, and then you're yep. like, "Oh no, who said that?" Yep, I totally get it. But now, yeah, she's, she's not wrong. Everything's no, figure outable. It is. There's a there's a a path for everything, and there's I'm a big. There, there's a solution for every problem. I'm, I'm a big believer in that. So there absolutely is. You some, and sometimes you have to be patient. Like some things, like Helene's, one of Helene Hansel's favorite quotes was, "There's never any failure. There's only a delay in results." Mm -hmm. And sometimes things, which I think they should happen now, or they should be fixed now, because I tend to be patient. If I just give it a bit of time. It does work out, but just not on my timeline, like on the universe's timeline. Yeah. Well, final two questions before we hop off today. Uh, first question, if someone is interested in learning more about you and, and the various offerings that you have, learning about sweepstakes and contests, you know, whether it's for them as an individual or a business, what's the best way for people to find out more about you? Well, the first one is contestqueen.com if you want to learn how to win sweepstakes. If you want to run a sweepstakes and you have questions, you could reach me at Idea Majesty. You know, I had to keep the crown. And then if you want to learn more about all the books I'm, I have written and am writing, uh, you go to wordsforwinning.com. I love that. Now, final question, no wrong answer. What does success truly mean to you? When I feel like what I'm doing has helped others, there's nothing more satisfying than getting an email or a DM from somebody that says, I took your advice, I went out and I followed, you know, what you told me to do, and I won, you know, X, Y, Z, and they are over the moon, especially if it's a big prize. I love motivating people to you know, get out there and they win and they message me and they're so excited. And I am so happy when I get those messages. I, I say I've helped people win over a million dollars in prizes because I have hard testimonials for that number, but it's at least 10 times that. I just don't have the the numbers to back it up, but I, I've been doing this for 20 years. So <laughs> it's a lot of success. I, I listen, helping other people win um makes you a winner as well I, I, there, there, there's nothing better there's nothing better well carolyn i appreciate you so much for coming on today and leaving my audience better and obviously all the ways of of being able to connect with you will be in the show notes in the bio of this episode and just really appreciate you number one but number two what you're doing to serve people and, and helping other people win thank you so much well again everyone that's listened today 
Obviously, wherever you're listening to and from, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast, leave us a rating and review. Let us know what you loved most. Uh, any feedback is always greatly appreciated. So everyone, please enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much again for checking out today's episode. And if you are listening through iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, please leave me a rating and review. Let me know what you loved, what you would like to see improved, or ideas you have for future episodes. And if you are interested in taking your business to the next level, don't hesitate to go to my website, www.scotterron.net where you can schedule a free discovery call with me where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with, and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my wife, Nancy, and mine, our free community on Facebook called LinkedIn Leads for Life. We would love to see you in there. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you, everyone, for your support. Grateful for each and every one of you.